Just so you know, I'm not the only one looking at you right now. There's a lot of pressure right now. I can, I can do that. All right. So once again, so we make it up to the collarbone. We're at C3, right? Mm -hmm. We already know we got a round T4 area, right? What did we What did we already learn about up underneath the arms here? It's different. That's thoracic. Right? But what What T levels? T1 and 2. Uh, we're closer to 3, no, 4 C. here as well, right? Like C7. That is, so as I hit the collarbone, I'm going to start over down here at the, at, the, at the fingers, right? Bless you. Right? So sharper dull, sharper dull, sharper dull, all the way up, right? So you want to figure out, try and figure out, a, get a general location uh, on what type of pain they have and where. So once again, I'm going to document it, sharp versus dull in my chart, uh, and then kind of go from there. You want to do it bilateral, best of you, bless you. And you want to go bilateral on both sides, right? Because you can have unilateral side affected, different, different lengths, and all that comes down to your documentation and your ability to pass off to the ER, right? So uh, a lot of times when they have, just wait, give up, <laughs> right? No, times two. Uh, and so a, as you're doing your, your painful stuff, there may be times where it's like, hey, I got, I got dull, I got nothing. You apply a little bit more pain, right? Because you want to see just what they can or can't feel, right? So how would you, how would you inflict pain on Mark's feet? Oh, can I try? The rolling up the toenails. Rolling the pen on the nail bed. Good. Ivy. Ivy in the foot. <laughs> so, like, honest, that would hurt. <laughs> you want to try it? We'll let you do it. No. No. You don't you like. You are not touching my dad. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, and so, a lot of times you can use needles. Needles are actually very good things for some of that sharp stuff. But you got to remember. You, you, I mean. Don't just start jabbing it into people's legs, right? I mean, but but you can actually use that sharp part to sense how what their level of uh, sensation is, right? So, so you have the nail beds. Uh, you use the pen roll. Uh, the other thing that you can do is you can actually do a pretty good uh, foot. Like just t take. Uh, so we, we carry these little metal. Uh, it's almost like. A, scalpel kind of thing without the scalpel, the scalpel on it, uh, that are very thin. Uh, basically, we be like taking like the, the ink thing and you can just grab it and just run it right up the feet. Is that uh, testing for a reflex? Uh, no, it's just, just testing sensation. for pain and sensation, like how much, because some people will, I mean, to be honest with you, some people will fake stuff, and so you're really testing, just like the unconscious people that, that were like, all right, let's get some vitamin A and watch. They're gonna wake right up. Everybody know what vitamin A is? Ammonia. Ammonia inhalants, right? So I love ammonia inhalants. Those are like my go-to. Right, uh, and so those are my go-to throwdowns, especially in Station 2's area. I like, walk up and be like, do the old kick nudge thing. And they're like, I'm just like, yeah, dude, wake up. You got to move on. Let's go. Move it. And they're like, oh, I can't do it. And I'm just like, oh, you can't, can you? I was like, we can play this game. So we'll walk over, grab the ammonia inhalant, snap two of them, put them in my hand, and I mean... It doesn't look the greatest the way I do it, but it's a good way of just <laughs> making sure. But it's, it's kind of one of these things, Andrew, you're going to be my victim. I hate to say it. No, nope, just stay right there. Um, I'll take the ammonia inhalants. I'll put them between these fingers right here, right? And I'll kind of cut my hand like this. I'll be like, hey, buddy, this is what we're going to do. Super hard. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. So what I do is I hold his mouth shut, yeah. right? So what do they try and do? Breathe in. Breathe in. No, they don't try and breathe in. Bite you? They try to go. <laughs> they try and hold their breath, right? But what happens when they finally take that breath? <laughs> Are they awake then? Yeah. They're wide awake. I'll be like, yep, that's what I thought. I'm like, time to move on. And they're like, Ugh. I'm like, oh. and then I just, so then I whisper to them. I'm like, oh, do you want to do it again? They're awake again. Weird, right? Nobody likes ammonia inhalants, right? So the other thing you can do is you can take a non-rebreather mask, put a non-rebreather mask over their face, drop a couple of ammonia inhalants <laughs> up in the non-rebreather mask. Don't turn the oxygen on. Just let it percolate in there. Let it sit. Uh, because that makes it look like, like if you're out on the street and people are there around you and stuff. As opposed to trying to go smothering. Right. The whole... Chloroform hole? Right. Chloroform hole. Chloroform hole. Chloroform hole. Exactly. Uh, so the non-rebreather is really good. It makes it look like you're giving somebody oxygen, but yet you're waking them right up. Yeah, I mean, if it's not Narcan D50, it's the ammonia, right? So, uh, all right, so.
good, good palpation uh, uh, on your neuro assessments. All right. Um, we talked about neurogenic shock and death. Oh yes, no, you had some. Um, so I was gonna say you should check and see if they've had any like surgeries because I've had three knee surgeries and I don't have like uh, uh, topical uh, sensation or like like a solid portion of my leg. Um, did you sue them? No, I mean it's not, they cut the nerve. I mean they had the. It, it's like normal. You're not supposed to have like they cut the nerve. So I have some like I have like. That's deep, what they told you, right? <laughs> I have deep, I have deep sensation, uh, but not like uh, like if someone were to like just touch it really light, I couldn't tell. Have you noticed that Justin keeps touching your leg through? <laughs> you've been missing that, haven't you? You're missing you're missing the little. Uh, you might want to like get a little like motion a shield or something on there just to protect your leg. Oh, okay. Okay, so anytime you have spinal stuff, uh, just do a good seat, size up, do all that good stuff. Uh, ABC, suction, do all that. Mm -hmm. uh, here's, a, here's a nice little step off fracture. You can see how you got pretty distinct, right? And so think, think of spinal cords running through here, right? So normally it would run straight, but now you're offset, so a lot of times you can kink your cord, you can sever your cord. Uh, uh, for that surgery, is basically they're going to have to realign everything uh, and fix that. Was there something on digital intubation just then, a couple slides ago? Maybe. <laughs> Do you want to talk about that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Have we done over digital intubation in the. Yeah. 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 It's, it's, been it's been. That nasal has been kind of a confusing subject. That's because we have so many other cool devices now that a lot of this has gone out of practice. Yeah because we have the Kings, we have the eye gels, we have the LMAs. You guys could do any eye gels in the OR at all? They let you do any of those? Yeah. Super easy, right? They're like a huge King Airway. Right. Well, it's, it's like a huge LMA, really. About a cup. We have them here. Yeah. Yeah, they're, they're kind of cool. There's a big push for your hospital to do those, but. Um, yeah, so I mean, with, with digital innovation, you're just avoiding a lot of uh, uh, manipulation with your ear and just go <laughs> in your fingers run it up and through, uh, hoping that your finger doesn't get chopped off by somebody that has neurological issues already. So now they're going to end up posturing, going into like this decortical posture thing, chop, lop off your finger because they just bit it because your fingers are in their mouth. But you could use a little bite block, right? You could use a little bite block, but now it's in the way of you trying to pass the, the two. So you got all kinds of complications when it comes, like the situation has to be absolutely perfect in order to do a digital innovation. Same thing with the nasal innovation. Uh, nasal innovation is kind of out with the king tubes and stuff like that. The idea was, is back in the day, was using it for like COPD patients that just become exhausted, where you're pretty much bypassing a lot of the gag reflex in your uh, oral pharynx, posterior oral pharynx. So you put a little whistler on the, on the tube. Uh, as you pass it through, as you get it close, is that because they're still breathing? So you would hear a little whistle on the end of your ET tube. When you were getting close, you'd wait and you'd time it, and then you'd advance it uh, on their breath. So the cords open up, in goes the tube. Uh, and you care them. But that's really going out of practice with all of the new um, additional devices. So. Well, I can wait till you want, you want to wait till lab? Yeah, well, right. I can just Cool. Because we're right at 11, so those of you that need to go. Unless you want to hang out and talk to me a whole bunch more. Um, well, I don't think I'm going to keep it right now.